In 4-4 four four time, a whole note goes at the beginning of a measure, as opposed to a whole rest, which goes in the middle. Here, there is a mistake of placing a whole note in the center of the measure and a whole rest at the beginning, even though it's intended to fill that measure. Notes below the center line have stems that go up, and notes above the center line have stems that go down. Stems for notes placed on the center line can go either direction, but they usually go down. The standard length for a stem is one octave. However, an exception to this rule is when a note is more than one ledger line above or below the staff. In that case, the stem extends to the center line. The first two stems here are too long, and these ones are too short. The fifth note stem should extend a full octave, as it is on the first ledger line above the staff. This note stem is too short, and should extend to the center line. Sometimes when we notate by hand, we get lazy, and forget to thicken the beams. The beam must always be a straight line, and at least twice as thick as the stem. When there are two notes in a group, draw the beam so that it follows the direction of the two notes. When it comes to beam angle, don't exceed two spaces. In an example like this, the note furthest from the center line dictates the direction of the stems, and stems can never be shorter than an octave. You can see that the lower note is an octave in length, and the beam angle is two spaces, causing the higher note stem to be more than an octave. The beam here is not thick enough, making it not very visually apparent. This creates a problem, especially when the beam lies on a line. Are these two incorrectly spaced quarter notes, or are they actually improperly beamed eighth notes? Here, the beam should slant upwards at the same angle as the note heads. This is wrong because even though both notes have stems that are an octave in length, the beam angle is too sharp. When writing triplets, the three and the brackets go on the stem side, and the bracket angle should be the same as the beam angle. Our mistake here is that the triplet bracket is on the wrong side of the notes. Remember, it should always be on the stem side. For two accidentals to be vertically aligned without collision, the general rule is that they should be at least a seventh apart. However, depending on font type and size, this may vary. In this trial, you can see that the natural sign is shifted slightly to the left as they are only a fifth apart. In this next chord, every note is sharpened. When adding accidentals to a chord, always work from the top to bottom and in to out because the highest accidental should be the closest to the chord, that is, in normal position. As well, accidentals that are an octave apart must always be aligned. This sharp has to be shifted slightly to the left to avoid collision. This is also true with the bottom sharp. Our middle sharp would cause collision in either the first or second position, so we shift it into a third horizontal position. Here is another example. The accidental placement is the same, but when two notes in the chord are a second apart, we shift the lower note head to the left of the stem. Here, we've shrunk the accidentals to make them fit, which is incorrect. This accidental placement broke the rule of sevenths and creates a collision. By not starting from the top, we've opened ourselves to some problems. Even though there are no collisions and the octaves align, our top accidental is not in normal position and is therefore incorrect. In our next example, although we've worked our way top down, in out, and observed the rule of sevenths, the octaves are not aligned. Dynamic markings should always be on one horizontal plane for each system. By default, dynamics are notated below the staff. The crescendo should not touch the forte, and not only does the decrescendo collide with the piano marking, but also it's marked too low. Lyrics always go below the staff. For clarity, dynamic markings would then go above. This example may look correct, but it does not follow the conventions of music notation and may confuse the performer. Piano scores have a curly bracket or brace at the beginning of each system, 
as in any vocal or instrumental score, the clef comes first, then key signature, and finally the time signature. Here the bracket is missing, and the position of the time signature and key signature are reversed. In ensemble scores, each system always has a bracket with curved ends at the beginning, as well as a straight vertical line joining all the parts. The staves in this system are not joined by a line. We also forgot that ensemble scores use brackets with curved ends and not braces.